Welcome to Fight News Now Extra, it's John Pollock with you, and as usual, we're gonna go through all of today's headlines and then welcome in John Ramdeen and Robin Black. On the agenda today, we have another Reebok signing. Sarah Kaufman doesn't get her cupcake and marked down February 17th because it's the biggest fight pass event yet. The Nevada Athletic Commission has announced their agenda for next Tuesday's commission hearing in Las Vegas. The agenda includes hearings for Anderson Silva, Nick Diaz, and Hector Lombard, all expected to be handed temporary suspensions before their formal disciplinary hearings at a later date. The commission will also hear from Francisco Rivera to overturn his loss to Uriah Faber at UFC 181, and a disciplinary hearing will be held for Ashley Evans. It's not the fight she petitioned for, but Sarah Kaufman has been added to the UFC 186 card in Montreal for a third fight with fellow Canadian Alexis Davis. The two first fought in April of 2007 in Davis's first professional fight, with Kaufman winning by TKO and then rematching in March 2012 where Kaufman won a majority decision. Davis has not fought since last July where she was stopped by Ronda Rousey in the opening round of their bantamweight title fight at UFC 175, and Kaufman last fought in April last year, defeating Leslie Smith. And female strawweight Paige Van Zant announced on Tuesday that she is the latest fighter to sign a direct sponsorship deal with Reebok. Van Zant debuted last November for the UFC, defeating Kylan Curran, and will next meet Felice Herrig on the April 18th Fox event. She joins fellow fighters John Jones, Ronda Rousey, Johnny Hendricks, Conor McGregor, and Anthony Pettis with their own Reebok deals. And we're joined by John Ramdeen and Robin Black, and we look ahead. February 17th, Las Vegas, Nevada. Anderson Silva, Nick Diaz in the main event. Hector Lombard in the co-feature. We've got bantamweights Francisco Rivera and Ashley <laughs> Evan Smith. This is going to be the best card Fight Pass has ever brought you. I can't wait for this oh commission hearing God. next week. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a star-studded line. Very, very oh, entertaining. Do you think they will air the commission no. meeting? 100% on Fight they will. Oh yeah. Yeah, that they've been, they've been airing every single one, and it's a unique philosophy by the UFC that they will shine a light on this. They don't yeah. necessarily run away from it. Yeah, it, that is interesting. I mean, what else are you gonna do, really? <laughs> I mean, life is Lots of things. They, they make television where like guys who like made their life going with like a duck call. That's like very big reality TV. So a whole bunch of fighters that have been dinged for juice. I mean, that's however, just that good, will right? never make its way into a UFC broadcast. They'll never talk about a guy coming back from a drug suspension or why a fight maybe isn't happening yeah, that we weird. thought we were going to get. That's always been their philosophy that they don't cover that stuff. However, Fight Pass, the, it seems much more wide open to. To the the more diehard consumer that is very aware of these things yeah. on a more daily basis. Oh, I get it. If you're just analyzing media like objectively from far back and we have no interest in, in what we're looking at, it makes sense. You're on a large platform and you might have five million people, most of whom don't care about any of that stuff and would rather not know about it and would be confused by it. You just pretend it doesn't exist and then you've got us who are obsessed with every little thing and, and many of the people who watch our show, and we're like, yeah, we wanna see exactly what happens when the hammer comes down on the spider, you know? So it, it kinda makes sense to sort of feed everybody, but the whole thing is weird. I mean, the, I, I think we have a philosophy of trying to keep it 100. Like, whatever's actually going on, we're gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk in weird things about it, talk around it. If people are doing juice, we're gonna talk about it. And I think our audience kind of appreciates that and they give us feedback. Lately, people have been pointing out that everybody in Hollywood looks like they're on GH, yeah, right. which is probably the case. It seems to be discussed. A lot of CEOs are taking steroids. A lot of people of all different, this has infiltrated the world, but what's not the, just sports. It's true, but at the same time, you talk to Michael Bisping, you talk to Chad Laprise, guys that they're adamant about the fact that they do not use PEDs. It pisses them off. Luke Rockhold say, you know, this is a blanket statement that everybody in mixed martial arts is on some sort of performance enhancer, and that is not the fact. Everybody is pointing the fingers at us, saying that we're we're uh, steroid abusers and that we're cheaters, and that is not yeah, the yeah. case, and it's yeah. an unfortunate thing. But I, I thing. think that you know, this has yeah. become Groundhog Day, where every single day there's something new coming out, and I think it does breed skepticism amongst a lot of fans out there who for years had watched Anderson Silva and thought this guy could never be on anything. So I think there's skepticism now for any fighter that says it, and it's unfortunate because I do believe that there are a significant yes. amount of clean but, fighters out there but, that are tarnished I, by I, this. I think what happened is, you know, Back in the day, it's like, well, you can tell what a steroid abuser looks like. And this is not to point the finger, but you look at a guy Vitor? like a, a Vitor Belfort back in the day or Alistair Overeem. They have physiques where people are like, oh, you look at that. 
We know what this guy's been but doing. But then they see Josh Barnett, Tim That's Sylvia, right. huh? John Fitch recently. And unfortunately, now because of that, it's like, okay, well, if these guys are on it, everybody's yeah. on it. Okay, a couple thoughts. One is maybe by the end of this week, we got to like find a way to stop talking about this. Not because it's not interesting. It is fascinating. It really is. But you think about the distraction from how people are looking at the sport. I'm just thinking this out loud right now. But we talk about fighting, and we've literally only had time to talk about this. What does that mean to an audience? That's tr real. We have to do it. What does that mean to an audience who wants to l look at fighting? We wonder what the ripple effect is. But if everybody's talking about this, nobody's actually talking about the sport. And so the audience starts to just Feel this. Wow, everybody's doing juice. Holy well, crap. Everybody's conversely, Robin, no one talks about this, and it's almost like we're giving it's it a true. pass that this yeah, isn't true. an issue that yeah. needs to yeah. be tackled no, right. and needs to alterations need to be made. And we've made it pretty yeah. clear here. You're not going to eradicate this, yeah. but out of competition seems to be working yeah. pretty effectively, yeah. and I think it comes down on other commissions now. It, to me, uh, fight night testing and just testing for urine, that's bare minimum yeah. at this point, and maybe not even at this that's point. You, ne you need to increase it. Guys know when they have to submit a urine sample, yeah. they know how to cycle it out. That's just not enough in 2015. I, I've had coaches to me just literally when we're talking, and they know that I'm not gonna ever say anybody's name. It's just not in my nature. I wanna learn, I wanna understand what's happening, but I'm not, I'm not a rat, you know? But they'll say to me, well, yeah, my guy, we just stopped him using tests, like whatever, X weeks out, and, and he always passes the test. That was the year ago that was two years ago that's just the facts I mean it's also like do we want a for a 39 year old to come back from a broken and a half leg and watch him fight or do we not want to see that because if we don't want to see it no, he's got the name so we do want to see it. Want we don't want to see an up-and-coming guy we just want to pretend he can that's do right. it without that's using right. the we highest level of yeah. science available we want to and he was also so, tested three weeks out, where yeah. the leg, you would think he's in high-intensity yeah. training at that point But what, what we have to admit is that although we might want to see him fight, if we want to stop these guys from harming their futures and damaging their bodies and having this kind of sport, we just have to go, I guess we won't get to see guys like that fight anymore. And that's what we have to do as fans. All right. We will sit back, and hopefully we'll be moving on to other topics tomorrow. But in this sport, who the hell knows? We have more Fight News Now Extra. Check it out.